So tonight we're going to talk about relying on God. And I actually was preparing this for Sunday night and uh, got started on it and had a good word. But I didn't get to speak on Sunday night because you guys spoke so good that it was, we had a good, if you were in here Sunday night, we had a really good time Sunday night. We had a 1 Corinthians 14, 26 meeting. You say, what's that? That is where the Bible says each one of you come with a psalm, a revelation, a teaching, a tongue, an interpretation. And each one of you come with one ready to go. And we had a good time. And we went to like 730 and I, I could have still preached, but I didn't. Because <laughs> we had a birthday party then with Sarah and Paige. And we, you guys missed out on cake and ice cream and smoothies. And we had a party in here after Sunday night service. But uh, I was going to preach on relying on God. And so tonight we're talking about relying on God. What are we relying on? Who are we relying on? Well, we need to rely completely on God. So go over to John chapter 6. You know, John, good old John. He is the disciple that, very good, Jesus loved, and he called himself that, which was really cool. He wrote about himself and said, and the disciple that Jesus loved leaned on his bosom. That's pretty cool stuff. John 6, yep, yep, I heard John 6 out there. And go way down to verse 63. It's right after, um, right after Jesus had talked about eating his flesh, drinking his blood. And people were like confused, right? Well, he was talking about spiritual things. And that's where he refers to this in John 6, 63. He's talking about spirit. Okay. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So he was trying to explain a little bit to the guys, you know, and to the people that what's going on here. He was speaking spiritual words. Spiritual words. Right. He says the flesh profits nothing. I know I think we'd probably argue with that, but I think Jesus knew what he's talking about. Don't you? You think Jesus knew something? And I think he was giving us an answer here for life that we need to understand. So our trust is not to be in flesh. Right? Many times people trust man way too much. They rely on man rather than God, right? You know, now we got to be, we got to, we got to use our brain on this too, right? Because there are cultist Christian, cultist Christians that um, won't go to the doctor when they're dying and they've killed their kids like that. They said, well, we don't believe in the doctor. We only rely on God. Well, you got to use your brain. You got to use common sense and then you got to pray. Amen. And yeah, sometimes if you pray and you know God, sometimes God will say you don't need the doctor. That's fine. And I've heard, I've heard of both ways. People who said uh, one of my mentors in the faith, he told a great story. His, his niece was like really, really sick. And he said, you know, when you're really, really sick, you don't just sit there and die. So he, he said, we're going to pray. If we don't get the answer and you don't get healed, because he believed in divine healing as we do. But if you don't get healed, we're going to the doctor. And he prayed, and she got healed right there immediately. Instantaneous healing. Didn't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> See? But you, 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 you got to use wisdom. And so, yeah, yeah, if we need to go to the doctor, we go to the doctor. Amen? Yeah. We're, 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 don't get in the cults where, where they have certain cultish beliefs where they uh, 
say, well, we're just relying on God. Well, most time that, that's not the case. They're not actually, they have no faith at all. They don't even know what faith is. You know, they don't know what faith is. They're, they're, they're playing religion. And that's their cultist religion. That's different. If you know God and you know his voice and you know God, you know Jesus, you know his word, that's different. Right? When you know what God said in his word, that's different. When you know, when you believe God's word, that's different. Come on. But see, a lot of people won't do certain things because they say, well, I'm just trusting in God. The, the question is, are you actually trusting in God? Or is it just a cultish thing? Big difference, right? Big difference. And that's where a lot of people miss it right there. Because they're not actually trusting in God. They're, they, 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 they're trusting in what some person said. Come on. They don't really know God. They don't really know the word. And, and usually they're in some sort of uh, cult or, or, or religious doc, indoctrination that isn't true. Or they just really don't have any faith at all. They heard it and they tried it. But you don't try. You don't try these things, right? You don't try faith. You have faith or you don't have faith. And the, oh boy, that's good. What, one of the most important things to recognize is when you do have faith or you don't have faith. Right? If you don't have faith for, for a certain thing, whatever it may be, then you don't try and believe God for it because you don't have faith for it. <laughs> so don't act like you do, right? That's where a lot of people die, get in a mess. They don't have faith for whatever area, right? They say you got a financial problem. Well, it's all right to go to the financial advisor, get some help. Amen. But see, what we've got to be careful of is, is complete reliance on man. Trusting in man is an e easy trap to fall into. Because we see people. We don't see God. It's much easier to trust what you see. <laughs> you sat on that chair tonight and you did not even think about it. You sat down and never even had a thought. I wonder if this chair will hold me up. Because <laughs> you trust it. You see it. You've, you've seen it before. You've sat in it before. You've trusted it before. And your trust is there. Well, come on. Your, your trust can develop in God as you trust in him. Even though you don't see him. Right? We can't see God. So, you know, it is. A lot, that's why a lot of people don't have any faith. Right? They can't see it. So they won't believe it. But. If, we, if you're a believer here tonight, you do have some faith, right? You got some faith. And it doesn't matter that you don't see God. You know that the things that aren't seen are eternal. The things that are seen are temporary. So we know God is real. We know he's alive. And it doesn't matter. We can't see him. We can rely on him more than any man and should. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Reliance on man is very, very dangerous. Many people have trusted their jobs rather than God, right? And they lose their job and they go crazy. Well, you've seen, you've seen them go postal, right? You've heard of that one. They went postal. They lost their job. They got fired. Well, a Christian would go, well, praise the Lord. I'll get another one. I'll go find me another one because God will lead me and guide me to the correct job. Right? Instead of going postal. Right? If, if you go postal because you lost your job... You don't have faith in God. And your reliance is on man instead of God. Come on. Many people put their trust in their spouse rather than God. That's not good either. Yeah, you should trust your spouse. I hope you can trust your spouse. But you don't put your trust in your spouse. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's not how it works. Your trust is in God. See, God is the only one we completely rely on. Completely, right? Completely. He's the only one. Why? Well, all people could leave your life tomorrow. Now, probably won't happen, right? You know, hopefully Karen doesn't decide to leave me tomorrow. <laughs> but maybe one of your friends is going to leave you tomorrow. They're like, I'm, I'm just tired of him talking about Jesus. I'm tired of it. I'm done with that friend. <laughs> or, you know, maybe several of your friends. Maybe everybody you hang out with is gone tomorrow. 
They just say, they turn, they turn their back on you and say, Pfft. well, that, you know, if your reliance is on God, then you're completely stable still. Come on. You're completely stable. Right? I've thought about it many times, you know, because, you know, you see a lot of things as a pastor. A lot of people say they love you, got your back forever, and they're gone the next day. You're like, you told me you love me. <laughs> you said you had my back forever. Oh. <laughs> but see, I'm completely stable still. Why? Because my reliance is on God. So I'm still stable. I'm, I'm still stable because my reliance is completely on God. If everybody turns their back on me, I'm still stable. Why? Because God is my rock. Right? God holds us up when no one else will. God will still hold us up. Amen. And as long, as long as we don't leave God, then God's right there. God's always going to be there. The only way we get away from God is we leave God. And that's where people get real confused, right? They ask you, can you lose your salvation? I'm like, lose it? Why would I lose my salvation? What does that mean, lose? <laughs> would I just drop it on the floor and lose it? What? No. The only way you... Uh, lose, which just doesn't make any sense at all. You, you go away from your salvation. You walk away from your salvation, right? You walk away from it. Well, you can walk away from God anytime you want to. You're not a robot. You're not chained to God. He didn't put a chain on you. That's the devil. You're a free person and you are freely choosing to serve the Lord God Almighty. You are freely choosing to love on him. Come on, just as he loved you. You said he loved you first. You said, I'm going to love him back. <laughs> Amen. But as long as we don't leave God, he's there. And we can rely on him every day, every minute, every second. Let's look at Jeremiah. You know, the preacher. He's got to preach. So. <laughs> I'm trying to make it. Short, right? Trying. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. You're going to like this. Do, 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 do. 17. Did you find it yet? No. What? Oh, page 925, if you've got, what? 945? 945, if you've got the provided Bible. If you don't have the provider ball, you're on your own. <laughs> Jeremiah, did, what did I say? It or, did I say it? Jeremiah 17.5? Did I say it? 17.5, okay. Sometimes I don't know if I said it. All right. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Oh, he's got, you got the provided Bible. Page 945. 945. 175. Someone want to help them over here. Someone help them. I said it six times. No one knows where it is. Still. I mean, they don't know. All right, all right. We're going to read. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. This is what I was talking about, leaving the Lord, right? For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. That doesn't sound good. But see, putting our trust in flesh and in man will cause us to miss all the good. We're going to miss all the good in life. If we put our trust in man. We're going to see other people being blessed. And we're like, where's my blessing? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll wonder where God went. But God didn't leave. Amen. We left God. Amen. Right? We put our trust in man instead of God. 
God was right there, but we weren't looking in the right direction. He was right there. Right? We, 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 we were looking down instead of looking up at Jesus. Right? Our eyes were not looking in the right place. What does the Bible say? Keeping your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Well, if we're trusting in flesh, our eyes are on flesh. Right? That's why I say it with like the job. Your eyes are on the boss. And when he fires you, you don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> That's trusting the flesh. Come on. That's making flesh your strength. That's trusting in man. No, nope. we trust in Jesus. We trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. In every situation, we look at Jesus. And then in verse 7, we find out what happens when we do that. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is, is the Lord. We need these on the wall too, sir. We don't have these in the wall, right? This, these are better than all of them, I think. I was like, wait a second. These are the ones we need in the wall right here. For he shall be, he shall be like a tree. That's our, that's our logo. We got several tree ones out there. We need this tree one. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. That's the one who's trusting in the Lord and not in flesh, not in man. Right? When our trust is completely in the Lord, good things are going to happen. Come on. We won't fear when the trials of life show up. Amen. The sickness will not strike fear in us. Come on. The financial crisis will not strike fear in us. Why? Well, because we're trusting in the Lord. And we will continue producing fruit in the drought. <laughs> People are going to wonder, why are you still producing fruit in the drought? And our answer will be, I didn't trust in man. I trusted in the Lord. I was relying on the Lord. You were relying on the flesh. You were relying on man. I was trusting the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our leaf will, be, will still be green when theirs is brown. We will have joy while they're filled up with worry. Who's the worried one? The one who's trusted in flesh. Come on. Those who put all their trust in the Lord will be blessed. Will be blessed. It will happen. It will happen. No one can stop the blessing that comes to those who trust in the Lord. Oh, I'll say that again. No one can stop the blessing from those who trust in the Lord. Nobody. Oh, I've had many people try and stop the blessing into my life, but they lost every time. Why? Because my trust was in the Lord. Theirs was in flesh. And so they are worried and lost and they're brown and, and withering away, but I'm still green. And I'm still filled with joy. And I'm still filled with life. <laughs> Hallelujah. No one can stop the blessing that comes to the ones who rely on God. It's impossible to stop it. Because God's going to show up for those who trust him. I got one more verse. I'm, I'm running through. Or verses. Isaiah. You got, you got, got to go to Isaiah. Isaiah, which is right before Jeremiah. Isaiah 41. <laughs> 41. <laughs> what did I say? I don't know what I said. Huh? Oh, 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 sorry. Isaiah 41, chapter 41, chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. I could have said Isaiah 41, 10. Yeah. Okay. 
find it in the, the provided Bible, and then we'll help them over here with the page number. That's your Bible, though. That doesn't count. 1,530. No, no. That doesn't sound right. I was like, that sounds like the end of the book. Oh, you're... You, you, say again. 881. 881. You got it? 881? You got it? 881. Okay. Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's, that's a lot of people's favorite scripture right there. You hear a lot of people say, that's my favorite scripture. <laughs> Verse 11. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you shall be as nothing as a non-existent thing. This is fun stuff. For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not. I will help you. I will help you. That's reliance on God right there. That's relying on God for his help. His help. Come on. See, as we rely on God, our enemies just disappear. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They become nothing. They become non-existent. They become disgraced. They perish. Come on. Suddenly, they're just gone. They're just gone. I've seen it happen many times. God moves them right out of your life. You're like, what am I going to do with these people? What are we going to do with this? And all of a sudden, psh, they're gone. <laughs> Come on now. See, as we rely on him, right, we look to him. We, we, we look to him. We, we're, we're looking for his help. We're, we're holding his righteous right hand. Come on. Our, our enemies just vanish. Well, that's good stuff. But what's our part in that? Our part, we got to keep holding God's hand. That's what, I, that's what I was talking about. You, you, you can leave God all right. You can let go. Right? It's just like a kid with a, you know, a kid with her dad, right? Walking down. You see the little kid with their dad and they got a little hand and we got to keep holding that hand. Just keep holding on to God's hand. That's relying on God. Right? That's looking up to God, like just like a little kid does, right? Looking at daddy smiling. <laughs> That's how we do God, right? Come on. Remember how, how little we are compared to God. Woo! We little. And we know point zero 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 one of what God knows. Probably less than that. <laughs> so we rely on him. And we know he's got our back. We know. We know he does. We know his strength. Right? Just like a kid trusting their dad's strength, right? Their kid's not afraid of anything. They got dad. They're not afraid of nothing. Dad's, they got dad's hand. They're not afraid of nothing. Come on. We don't have to be afraid of nothing. We got, we got God's hand. Amen. Amen. We keep holding on to God's hand, our father's hand. And he's going to help us through any problem. He's going to help us through. He's going to give us strength in any situation. Come on. God's always going to be there. But see, we got to keep looking at him. We got to keep holding on to his hand. We got to keep relying on him. That's, the, that's often missed as we, we, we get our eyes on man. It's so easy to do. It's so easy to expect man to be our answer. Ooh, come on. The just shall live by faith. 
Come on. Oh, that's a bit. Oh, man, if you learn that now, you, oh, man. Ooh, if you learn that lesson right now, you, you, ooh, ooh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. See, you got to learn now. You got to learn it now. Man is not your answer. Never, ever look to man for the answer. Come on. Yeah, man's going to help you here and there, right? There's going to be a help along the way. But if you're looking to man for the answer all the time, you're, you're trusting in man, that's a dangerous place to be. Come on. When you pray to your father, come on, many times he sends a man to help. <laughs> I've had that happen many times. He sends a man to help. He sends somebody to help. But I, but I always look to God. Always look to God. When you, when you, when you, when you, you know, when you live like we do with, you know, we're, we're, we're pastoring a church, a non-denominational church where there's no support except whatever comes in. You're living by faith. <laughs> and these are, this is a great story I've told before, but we've had, we've had, uh, you know, people in the church, especially when I got here, right? And, and, and the big givers got mad at us for preaching tongues or preaching healing, right? Did I get upset when they left? Nope. Because why? Because my trust is in God. My reliance is on my God, not on man. So when the guy who has the big offering says, I don't want you to preach on healing any longer or my, my check's leaving the church, I say, bye. Have a good life. Have fun. Do your thing. Because I trust in God. And God will always come through for me. I'm living in a miracle right here. God brought us here by a miracle out of Iowa. God gave me a vision of this place right here. And that told me when this happened, I said, my God really, really loves me. I mean, he loves me a lot, and he'll never let me down. He'll never let me down. He's got my back. He has me. He will hold my hand. He will keep holding my hand, and I'm not letting go. <laughs> I'm not letting go of him. And, and, and no matter who turns their back on me, no matter who stabs me in the back, it doesn't matter because I got God. I got God. I got God's hand. I'm walking with daddy God and people think they're hurting you and you're like, didn't you know I, I know God? <laughs> didn't you know I know Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Didn't you know? No, they didn't. That's all right. <laughs> but I have made the decision. I'm going to hold his hand all the way. To the end. And if as long as I keep my reliance on him, it doesn't matter what any man does. Because I'm not looking at them. <laughs> oh, I didn't tell the end of that story. Every time, every time, every time, some big giver left the church, and you know, that's all that's that's our whole support. Guess what? Someone walked in and was a bigger giver. Because <laughs> God did it. Why? Because I was trusted in God, not in man. And God sent someone. God sent someone. See, that's why you don't have to worry. Because God will send someone. If your trust is in him, you lose the job, you lose the money, you lose whatever, whatever. You lose all, you lose all the people in your life. It doesn't matter. Because if you're looking at God, if you're relying on God, he'll send somebody. He'll send someone to help. He'll send someone to love on you. He'll send someone that's got your back. Hallelujah. That's my God. And he is so good. So God is the only one. I mean, the only one to completely rely on. He is the only one. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get help from man along the way. But always, always, always keep looking at him. Because that person that's helping you 
and you think they're wonderful. You think they're amazing. A week later, they hate you. And you're just still looking at God. <laughs> you're still looking at God. I still got God. I got everything because I got God. Amen. Woo, that'll preach right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I preach myself happy. Come on. You get this tonight? Rely on him. He will always come through for you. Man will, man will fail you many times. That's why we don't rely on man. But God never, ever, ever fails. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's give him glory. Oh, Father, we thank you. You're so good to us. We thank you, Father. You always come through. You always come through. We rely completely on you. We don't trust in flesh. We don't trust in man. We trust only in you. You have the victory for us. You have the answer for us. You always are there. You have our back. You love us with an everlasting love. And you are our father and you are a good father. Thank you, Father, for coming through for us again and again and again. And we're going to keep looking at you. Keep looking at Jesus and keep our eyes on our God. Father, we return as we always do. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the power belongs to our God forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen.